Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Jacob. So I want uh, all, all of us to take a step back and just marvel at how far we came with computing. We used computers before the size of the room, and now we have them in our hands. And it's not just size that changed of the computers. It's how we use them is also changed. We used, uh, this is how computers were envisioned to be used. You know, you work on the, on the uh, spreadsheets, you're doing your work, you're very focused on the computer in front of you. But this is how we use computers now. And computers, I mean mobile phone. We are not focused on them anymore. They're in the background. We drive with them, we run with them, we even cook with them. The phone is sort of this ambient companion, always with us, but it's not the center of attention. And yet the interfaces we're using for the phones are stuck in the last century. They're down for the office work, for spreadsheets, for documents, where the computer is a focus. What would be the interface for a device that is not just a tool to do tasks, but sort of as an ambient companion to support us in the background and where the device is not the center of your attention? So clearly, it would not be based on touch sensing or touch interaction, because you have to actually focus on the touch. And of course, um, this would not just apply to mobile phone, this kind of interfaces. It would apply to whole categories of emerging computing devices, such as devices mounted on the wall you cannot reach, uh, devices with the small screens, devices which you don't have a uh, screen at all. And while voice interfaces or verbal interaction have, been, have emerged as one of the important solutions for this kind of interfaces, we focused on non-verbal interaction, me and my team at Google, and we're trying to understand how we can uh, capture the user intent through non-verbal cues, like gestures, body postures, proximity, facial expressions. And these are very critical ways for humans to interact with each other. That's how we do this in the real world all the time. Because a single smile can tell you more than multiple pages in the book. In certain situations, 93% of our communication between us as humans is nonverbal. And what people do is often more important than what they say. We all know about that. So why do we always have to tell our devices explicitly what we want? By voice or commands or touching and you know, working with these complicated interfaces. Can we make our devices smart enough so they can understand our intent and what we want through non-verbal cues, gestures, facial expressions, and so forth. So what if the phone knows, for example, when you're leaving home and alerts you to come and pick it back, right? So you don't forget at home, but back at home. Or what if you can pick up information from the screen of one phone and drop another phone with a gesture rather than issuing complex commands and Bluetooth communications, pairing, so on and so forth? Would it be valuable? Would it be great? And uh, what if we can do this without compromising privacy, so you don't have to reveal your private information? And that's what we started working on five years ago when we started working on Soli. Soli is a PICA radar technology for non-verbal interaction. Why we use radar? Well, radar has a lot of great properties. It can capture large and small emotions. It can work through materials, so it's very easy to embed it in different devices like we did in Pixel. And also, it's very robust and privacy-preserving. The only problem we had when we started working on that is that existing radars was huge. And while our first design wasn't quite as large as these bad boys, it was still a large box, like this one. That was our first solid device. I used to go around and tell it's going to be in a watch. You can put it in your watch here. People didn't believe me. So we had to go to a lot of different iterations of prototypes, and including some pretty wild variations like this. So by 2015, we drastically reduced solely from this big box to this chip, single chip, as you can see here. But still, it was not enough to get into the pixel. We had to go even smaller. And today's device, you can see now on the screen, the latest one, 2019, is about one-fourth of the size of our first chip. So this is really exciting for me uh, that we have made this whole uh, journey. So we went from the box like this size to a tiny chip instead of Pixel 4 phones. So I think it's pretty cool technology development. So the hardware was not only one challenge. Um, we also had to address the complexity of radio signals. 
The radar uh, emits signals, radio waves, and captures reflections. That's how it works. And it does it at the speed of light. And as you move your body, this reflection would change. So the goal on developing using Soli and building tops of Soli is to understand how the signal changes captured by the radar correspond to your body motions. What's the correspondence is there? And the challenge here was, the biggest challenge, is that the signal you have doesn't look anything like this, something that you can easily understand. The radar recapture signal uh, it looks something like this. You can't recognize any human identifiable characteristics, which was at one of the point of using radar in the first place, but it's made it very difficult for us to understand how we can use it for our use case and applications. So we had to go through endless experimentation for years to understand which signal we want to capture and to, to get the motions we want. So here you can see the person moving his hand, and the red and yellow dots correspond to motions of the, of the speed and position of the hand, so-called Doppler images. So as we explored further, we start seeing patterns, repeating patterns in the signal. This is one of the early examples of the data you can see. And you can see that across the user, across the columns, the signals look similar, but between the rows is very different, and there's a different gesture. A gesture of the check mark in the middle is very different from the hand tilt, uh, like, as you can see in this picture. And it allows us to apply machine learning techniques, signal, signal processing techniques, to separate the signal and to set what, what, what we want to get. And that allows us to start exploring use cases for Soli and think what Soli could do for the user for the application. So with regular devices, like phones, we can only use touch and voice. That's all we can use. Now with Sony, in addition to touch and voice, you have this sort of like a bubble. You can use a hand motion, such as reaching and swiping, inside of this small bubble around the device. Now this small bubble can expand to the bigger bubble, about five to six meters, that's how far we can sense with Sony. And now your whole body can be the bubble. So you can um, figure out people's posture or motions or big gestures, like using your whole hands. So what can we do inside of these big and small bubbles? So we explored many possibilities. Let me walk you through some of the early ideas we worked on with did at Soli. For example, can the large bubble see us exercise? So like you're working out. And Soli can capture and tell you how to work out, work out better. Or can the small bubble she has making a secret gesture in the pocket, like, for example, sign your receipt in a store. Or can a small bubble, when a phone is in the pocket, allows us to stop its calling in the middle of the meeting by using the gesture like that? This was one of the earliest ideas. We also discovered that we can capture very small motions of the hand in a small bubble, like a micro gestures, where your hand becomes like a dial, and you can use this dial like in your hand, your hands dial to control small screens, like on smartwatches. It's an example. Or devices that don't have a screens at all. Or maybe there's no devices at all. And we actually did build this into the watch in the early prototypes. You can see this in the video. So what else? In a small bubble, can your hand become a puppet and you control a game? Like you can pretend you're a little guy running like a paper guy, and the faster you move your fingers, it's actually quite difficult to get tired. And then if you find fast enough, it becomes a plane, and you can fly, and you can go back. So you can play for hours if you want to. And then can we can, well, if you don't like that, can you can use two hands, like in the movie Her, to have a little guy running around, the, uh, around this little world, and you can jump by moving hands forward. So this game controls was one of the fun applications we tried to explore. So how well can you track position of things within this small bubble? This is an early experiment. And you can do see how we can track position of things around the Soli. Can the large bubble see a person walking by? Now, pay attention to the middle screen, in the middle, mid middle window uh, in the middle of the screen, the green one. That shows the Doppler image of person walking by. You can see moving hands and moving body. So yes, you can see a person moving by in the bubble. You can use it for interaction. Can we distinguish between, for example, a human and a dog, like a pet? Yes, again. There's a person walking around. You see the, boy, the dog following up, the white dog matching the, uh, matching the floor. 
And you can see how the move, uh, person moves. You see these uh, big dots moving uh, left and right on the screen. And when the dog runs, you can see the tail moving up and down, left and right. So a human moving hands, a dog moving tail. So yes, you can distinguish a, uh, between a man, uh, between person and uh, the dog using the radar. So what if you can wear solely in your pocket? And then you can issue gesture to control your media just by using your freehand gestures, like opening your hand, hand to control, uh, to start play, playback in the home. So this was all the uh, ideas, a lot of ideas we did, a lot of experiments we did. Some of the use cases we explored, we explored many more. And this was super exciting for us in early stages of the project because it validated that Soli can be used to capture nonverbal interactions. And this is, they are valuable and helpful for consumers. We can create some exciting use cases. And indeed, nonverbal interactions, such as gestures and presence and body postures, facial expressions, all of that, represent the third major mode humans use to communicate, in addition to voice and touch. To date, products offered the first two, voice and touch, with Soli, we are finally making the third one available to consumers. What does it look like in the Pixel phone? I would like to invite you next, Zaz, uh, Zach to come on stage and talk about Motion Sense. Thanks, Ivan. Hi, everyone. My name is Shana Zak, and I am a product manager on the Pixel team. So as you just heard from Ivan, this was a long-term effort. And there were a lot of ifs. And so it was an extremely interesting challenge for us on how do we take this new interaction model to bridge the digital world with motion sense. Now, the definition of focus areas and use cases for motion sense followed an iterative process. We first started with generative research because we wanted to understand how do people use their phone? What are the challenges they're facing? So after this extensive research, we defined the focus areas and use cases that motion sense could solve well. And we went ahead and defined the experiences and built prototypes. This was just halfway through the process. We wanted to validate those experiences. And so we took those prototypes and conducted both quantitative and qualitative user research so we could validate our use cases. Based on that research feedback, we zoomed in on a few focus areas with a keen eye on helping people, as that is in line with building a more helpful Google for everyone. Now we all know we are distracted all the time, right? And that was very clear from our user research as well. Our phones keep ringing, and we keep getting distracted. So we want to stay in the moment, even though we need quick access to our phone. So one of the key experiences we focused on was silencing interruptions instantly so you can stay in the moment. Like for me, this is my personal example. My phone rings in the morning, alarm goes off, and I have to like rush to find my phone and quickly quiet it before my baby wakes up. And so with motion sense, now I can just gesture and my phone silences immediately. And then I can take the phone and silence it before my baby wakes up. The other thing we saw in our user research were users were, were struggling to silence the phone when you're in a movie theater, or you're in a meeting, or you know, you're in a kid's recital, and all of a sudden the phone rings, and you're like, oh my god, let me find that phone and silence it. You're scrambling to si find that button. Now, with just a wave, you can silence the phone to avoid those embarrassing situations. Pixel is the first device that actually understands when you want to shush it. You don't need to shout at it or hurriedly scramble to tap a button. You can just wave and silence your phone. Now, based on the user research we did initially, another big focus area that emerged was how does the phone stay in step with you? Phones today aren't proactive. They're reactive. They're helpful, but they're reactive. They are helpful once you've pressed a button, touched the screen, or issued a hot word, which I won't do now, or else all your phones will go up. So this was another area we looked at helping with motion sense for Pixel 4. So with motion sense, it can accelerate your common interactions with the phone to ensure it's in step with you, like helping your device unlock faster. As you reach for your phone, 
Motion Sense understands that you are trying to pick up your phone, and it turns the camera on, so by the time you've raised your phone, your phone gets unlocked very fast. Another key use case was truly helping your device become smarter by only turning on the display when you're near the device and turning it off when no one is around. With this, you can quickly check time, notifications, or other information without even having to pick up your phone. You just glance at your phone, it knows you're there, and it touches, opens your UI. Again, with our research, we noticed that touch UIs aren't always convenient. When you're driving or eating or feeding your baby, it's, not, it's going to prevent you. So we focused on how we can help extend the phone. Thanks to Soli, on Pixel 4, it can understand your gestures. You can use the phone when touch isn't convenient. This can be, again, like I said, while you're driving or eating, or while your display is off. You don't have to bring the notifications down. Your music controls are always available and at all times. You can just swipe to the next sound, go back, or go forward. And last, but not the least, my personal favorite, waving hello to your favorite Pokemon character or getting hearts from your Pokemon character. You can use this on your wallpaper or through the Pokemon app. So as Ivan said, unlike vision, phone cameras, or hearing, phone mics, radar is a sense that humans don't have. So when we put it in Pixel and augment the user with it, we're actually giving them a sixth sense and a superpower. Thank you, everyone.